All right, guys. Welcome back. Good afternoon. It's Friday, November 5th. It's 1130. And I just left the gas station. I'm at 0 0.12 miles in. Still in the heart of Crested Butte. Working my way out of town. Um, I just had a great three days off. Uh, where I literally did nothing except lay in bed and I did laundry. And I stuffed my face. Um, I just had my, by far, my most expensive food resupply at the gas station. I spent $160 in the gas station. It's just, it's only half here. The market doesn't have enough stuff. Um, so, I have a, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think. I have my longest stretch ahead of me in between towns. I got 160 miles ahead of me, a trail miles, until I hit Grand Junction. Now, if I do 160 miles and I go off the pace that I've been doing since I hit Colorado, that's gonna take me 16 days. Um, I can't carry 16 days of food. My pack is as heavy as it's been right now. It's, uh, I mean, it's packed. I got three liters of uh, water and I had 10 days of food and that's 10 days of food at like 1,500 calories a day. So kind of stretching it out. Um, but then I went back in and bought another uh, like 60 hours worth of like uh, honey stinger energy chews and cliff bars and stuff. So I would say I have 12 days of solid food and I'm gonna have to stretch that out. So I'm either gonna have to stretch that out and eat less or I'm gonna have to push it more and do more than 10 miles a day. So, that being said, I'm going to stick to the alternate route, I believe, coming up here. And instead of going up on trails, I'm going to be walking roads. Um, they're basically identical mileage-wise. I'm just going to not... Hopefully, it's a little easier. That's all. So, I'm going to be up in the elevation in the passes. Instead of going through Grand Mesa National Forest, I'm going to kind of hit it, then go up around it. And then I still got to go through one section near the end as I make my way to Grand Junction. Because there's a couple sections here that there's only one route. So we'll see what happens. All right. Right into some elevation and I'm already soaking wet and struggling. This is a... Uh, it was closed off. But I'm guessing that's the vehicles. We'll see. I hear some work going on the top here. This is uh, Old Keebler Pass Road. <sighs> and I'm leaving Crested Butte behind. Man, oh, this pack is heavy. My food bag is just maxed out. And then I have stuff just jammed in, in the front pouches and stuff, which I hate doing, but I had to get some extra calories in that bag just in case. Well, I think this is coming up on McLaren Pass, but I'm on Keebler Pass Road, so. That's what my map calls it. It could have changed names. Like right there it says Gun County Road. Gun Sea Road. I don't know. Um, but it looks like I'm going to be gaining almost 2,000 feet of elevation. So, so much for uh, breaking in slowly, right? All right, guys. Just slowly making my way up this, uh, this road. This pass. I'm only at uh, 1.50 miles in. Um... Besides having such a huge food bag, you know, I had to pack extra paper towels for bathroom use, baby wipes, batteries, you know, an extra chapstick, all the extra, all the normal stuff. I had to put some extras in because, you know, this could be a 16 day trip. I hope it's not, but it could be. I mean, it could be more, but if I go off my averages, it should take me 16 days. Um, but it's looking like I should hit some. I like downhill and some easier stretches. So I, I'm pretty sure I should be able to do this in another 14 days. But we'll see. All right, I'm at uh, the Wildcat Trailhead. Looks like there's some camping around here, but I'm only 2.60 miles in. Um, even though I don't want to be stuck above a tree line, <clears throat> it looks like uh, Lake Lily, I think it's called. It's coming up in four miles. And then... Another two miles off trail after that, there should be a campsite. Um, so I'm going to shoot for that. Uh, 
I got to start getting in more than 10 miles a day, but it's not going to start today. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> I'm at uh, 3.66 miles, 9,008 feet, and I've only climbed uh, 600 feet so far. I'm getting ready to drop my pack come up here in a little bit. My left arm's already going. <clears throat> I've already went through almost a liter of water, sucking it down. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm at 5.44 in. Definitely a little chillier on this side. I still don't have my bean or nothing on. <clears throat> We're looking like uh, maybe another six miles to get to where I'm thinking about camping. All right, guys, it's 2.15. I'm seven miles in and uh, just came up on this camping sign here. Looks like there's some spots up in here, so I'm just going to go look around. I might call it a day. Uh, both my knees are actually a little sore today. This road walking has just been destroying me. And I, it's definitely 100% these shoes just don't have enough cushion for my uh, old bones. <laughs> At least that's... That's what I'm guessing. Um, my heels are sore too, but I know I got to maintain, a, you know, I got to be pushing at least 10, if not more, but I don't got to do it all on the first day. All right, um, there's plenty of camp spots here, but they're all, I'd have to set up in the snow, and I'd rather not do that if I, if I can. So I'm going to go up there and hopefully look around behind them trees. There's like a I don't know, maybe a little parking lot or something up there. There's like a bulletin board area, which is uh, usually right outside National Forest trailheads and stuff like that. But I'm gonna go up and look around there just cause there's no snow. All right, now I'm at the Keebler Pass campsite area. I'm right here. I'm probably gonna head up towards this way. Just follow this road up. There's a bunch of campsites along. <clears throat> so that's probably what I'm gonna do. Man, my knees are killing me both of them. Walking in the snow is even worse. Cause it's like, I don't know, I feel like it gives way a little bit and then I gotta catch my knee off guard. <sighs> All right, making my way to Lake Irwin, two miles or so. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of cars like packed up, dirt bikes and all. It is Friday night. So I don't know, I don't know if they were heading up here. They were passing me on the road a couple miles ago. But some of this tra uh, tracks look fresh, so I won't be surprised with the half decent weather we're getting for November if a lot of these campsites are taken. But I'll find somewhere. Well, here's another campsite. I'm going to walk back, <clears throat> but it's probably going to be covered with snow, but I think I'm going to have to take it anyway just because the more I walk back, everything back here has got snow. <clears throat> so... I will save myself some unnecessary walking that's not even on the trail. There might be a car back here though also, just tracks in the snow. All right, three o'clock guys. I'm uh, 8.28 miles in for the day. Camp spot, camp spot, camp spot. And uh, I can't see the fire ring or anything, but there's cut firewood over there, but that's not what, but I, I chose this one because I got a dry spot, dry-ish, at least not snow, so I could put my tent on this, at least cut down on the, uh, the cold and the, um, wetness, or I might be able to put it up here, I gotta look around, but, man, there's some deep snow back here, yeah, it's gonna be too small with that, uh, so right there is fine, I'll probably put it, uh, I don't know, maybe up and down so my head's higher on my feet, or crossways, maybe, I'll see though, but I got a couple hours to kill before that. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, sit down, relax. Um, I can drink as much as I want because when I leave here tomorrow, I can fill up uh, three liters. So I'm going to hydrate and get ready for tomorrow's big push because I got to start getting miles. Look, I'm just sitting here eating some snacks, guys. Um, I'm going to have to set the tent up. It's getting so cold. It's probably because I'm wet. I'm not moving now, but it's a this is a cold area in the shade. <clears throat> um, I'm getting rained on by like ice chunks and stuff falling out of the tree, so... Now, the reason why I got to get in my tent uh, is going to have to work. <clears throat> it's 
a lot of snow, man. I definitely made the right choice with the bike route. Uh, I don't know if you can see in here, but I got a bunch of ads. Like these, um, I just had one. These are good. Just like energy chews. I got a bunch of them. I got a bunch of uh, honey stinger energy chews. And then I got some honey stinger like gel packs. And I got like a lot of these uh, waffles. Different flavors. I like these. They're good. But they're like 100, 150 calories per one. So got Cliff Bars. All the regular nonsense. But I'll show you more of my food later. Spam's in there. You know that. Uh, but I only had so many choices because I was at the gas station. So it was an expensive uh, refuel. All right, guys, it's at 4.35. I got the tent set up. It's actually in a pretty good spot for uh, flatness and all. I uh, put the guidelines out because I don't know what the wind's going to be like here. Um, that's it. I mean, there's just nothing to do. So I'm going to uh, hop in the tent and lay down and listen to this book on my phone's charging. And then uh, I'm going to have to get up in the morning. And just my gloves got a little wet just setting everything up. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm actually pretty dry. Uh, I'm sure my... First, the outer layer sock is probably pretty wet. So I'll take that off and hang it up, even though it's just going to freeze. But it's better than wearing it. But then again, if I wear it, it'll probably dry off inside my bag. So I don't know. But uh, this place is going to get no sun tomorrow. I can already see that just because of all the snow that's here. So I'm just going to have to get up tomorrow morning when it's cold, pack up, and then hit the road with uh, the wet stuff. And then uh, worry about drying it out later in the day. All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 9 o'clock on uh, Saturday, November 6th. Let me double check that. I think it's 9 o'clock. Yep. Oh, it's so cold, my uh I'm still wearing double uh, warming layers up top. Um, I just took my puffy coat off. My feet are just burning. I'm leaving with two pairs of socks on. Oh, here we go, stepping in the snow. Boots is uh, definitely a good idea if you're in this location in uh, Colorado. It's just these trail runners just uh, it's just it's too cold. My feet get wet too quick, and there's really no drying out anymore. They just freeze. Anyway, um, last night was a cold night, guys. As you can tell, looking around, probably. I'm looking forward to getting into some sunlight as soon as I find a good area with some sun i'm dropping all this stuff and drying it off because everything's frozen my sleeping bag's got a lot of condensation for me breathing in it you know etc etc but uh, i'm on the move i just can't believe how cold my feet are all right well i just passed i was gonna get up on that hill but uh i'm just gonna keep going for a little bit i gotta get some miles in right now um My heel actually feels pretty good this morning. Now, usually when I first wake up, it's extremely sore, but not today. Um, I put my rain, I usually put the rain gear, I keep it in a stuff pa uh, sack at the end of my feet so I can put my feet on it. And I usually have my heel like on it, but last night I just, it pushed up some. So like uh, it was on like my uh, lower calves. So my heels were just like hanging in the air, which is fine. I guess it helped. <clears throat> I mean, so I'm going to push a couple miles. Uh, I didn't drink any water yesterday. Like I said, I was going to basically. So I have a, a liter and a half of Gatorade and that's it. Um, uh, I didn't have a tea or anything this morning. I just wanted to get out of there. So I just mixed some Gatorade in my water. But uh, this road is past numerous creeks and streams and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to uh, just make it right down here. Not even stop and get water. I'm going to roll the dice. All right, guys, you know, I'm 2.64 miles in. I had a little bit of climbing, and I'm at uh, like 97,000 uh, feet right now. But it looks like the next marker on my map is at 6,000-something. So I'm guessing I'm going downhill all the way today. I'm downhill, honestly. Uh, it's a little harder on my uh, heel, I think, because my heel hits first, I'm assuming. And, it always, and my pack always feels like it's pulling me backwards more. So uphill, downhill, they all have the pros and cons. But uh, overall, it's definitely easier on the body. All right, guys, it's 10, 15. I'm uh, getting my gear out to dry it out while I have a chance. Uh, the ground's a little wet here, but 
I got some sunlight. So it'll, it'll do more help than damage. I'll throw my stuff up on that hill. It looks pretty dry. Hanging on these little trees if I can. So I'll be here for a little bit. Probably an hour or so. All right, 11 20 guys. Always feel good after I get my gear all dried out and repacked. It's just uh, one big check off for today. Now, in theory, no matter what happens, I'll be uh, you know laying down in my tent with that maximum warmth and everything. So it's always a good feeling. And uh, as I come to find out in Colorado, it throws a lot at you, but it gets over 300 days of sunshine. So usually, knock on wood. Um, sun isn't far away. All right, got a little stream right here. I'm going to uh, resupply. And it looks like we're heading uphill. And it's going from uh, asphalt to a uh, dirt road. So we'll see. I thought I was going to be going downhill all day, but I guess not. All right, guys, just filled up on water. Um, I didn't drink one, but I got three full liters now. So should be good for the day. And I guess it wasn't too much uphill, so. Usually when the roads turn into dirt is when they get up close near the pass. I've only been through two passes on the road that uh, were paved the whole way. So this is a little backwards, they're a little unusual. But like I said, I'm getting in the middle of nowhere, so there's no towns or nothing. I haven't seen a house since I left Crested Butte yesterday. Just absolutely beautiful out here. I'm at five miles in, guys. Uh, all right, guys, I'm only uh, 2.60 miles in since my last break, but I gotta drop this pack. It's, uh, it's just killing me. Plus, I got a headache coming. Whew. Pack is just too heavy, guys. I know I've said it before. It's just, it's just too much weight for out here. Whew. I'm gonna uh, drink some fluid. Drop my pack right here. All right, guys, it's at like 12.55. Um, yeah, I'm 2.63 miles in since my last break. Uh, so, what was I? I restarted my watch. I think I was at three miles. Three, so I'm coming up on six miles in. Um, there's actually a camp spot coming up, a dispersed camping area coming up uh, right here. But uh, I think I should probably push on. I just... Uh, I'm, I'm staying good mentally. I just, physically, my body's hurting my heel. I don't know if you can see my limp right now. I definitely got a limp. Uh, it's just a pain issue. I'm dropping the pack just for, even if I just drop for like a minute, it helps tremendously with the, uh, like reset my shoulders and my arms. It's pretty much, everything's on the left side of my body. It's weird. My left knee, my left heel is extremely bad. My knees are, by the way, my knees are I feeling a thousand times better than they were yesterday. But we'll see how it feels in a couple more miles. Um, you know, it's my—it's always my left shoulder and left arm in the pack, and my right never bothers me. So it makes me tighten it up more on the right and loosen up more on the left. I'm trying to—it doesn't work. I'm coming up on that little dispersing camp area, which I was thinking about maybe stopping at, but I need to press on. Um, Got some hunters down here, it looks like, and then uh, you guys probably can't see on the phone, but there's some other trucks parked up there, so that's what I figured would be there, hunters. That's all I've seen on this road today. All right, this is uh, called Horse Ranch Park, a uh, dispersing camping area. So, definitely could get up in there and camp if I wanted, but we'll keep moving on. Well, I was just looking at my map. Um, the dispersing area was one area I could camp at, and then if there's another trail called the uh, Cliff Side Trail or something like that, it goes to the Lost Lake Campground about three miles back. But I get that, you know, that's six miles of, of walking that don't count towards the trail. So I'm going to keep going forward. But just looking at my map, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot coming up. I mean, hopefully I can squeeze in somewhere. But I might have to walk all the way to another campsite. But that's another like 10 miles away. And well, I don't know if I got that in me. But, like I said, there's usually always places you can get into, like down there. All right, guys, it's at 10 after 2. I'm at 8.43 miles in for the day. Um, I just took a little break. I'm dealing with some elevation right now. 
nothing crazy though. But uh, I don't know how much further I'm gonna be able to push it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if I get to ten. But I should probably should have camped right back where I took a break because now that we're going up, I gotta go down quite a bit to find some flatness. Maybe if I go up a little bit, but. Just a struggle with my my heel and this heavy pack. Well, I'm not far. I mean, a couple thousand, maybe a thousand feet or so from above tree line. So, man, boy, do I miss them days of when I thought I was struggling with the Casino Canal with blistered feet but my pack was half the weight I definitely missed that time through I guess probably Iowa after I started getting my uh, endurance back and all after taking basically two months off where I was knocking out 20 mile days 22 mile days you know challenging but it felt good and relatively flat and oh my pack was so much lighter all right, I'm nine miles in, guys. Just shy of nine miles. Uh, 8.80. So I like to round it up because make myself feel better. Um, this is Gunnison National Forest. Gunnison National Forest, sorry. <clears throat> um, I see this little camp spot here, but I'm going to go walk back in the trees and try to get in them thick pines, see what I can find. So I'm not seen from the road. I mean, the road's right here, but... You see, I'm not far from above tree line. I mean, I'm a good distance, but no need. I don't know what I'm getting myself into coming up. And I don't want to keep passing up camping because I'm I'm just struggling. So I'm looking for a way out. <laughs> no need for me to lie. I'm going to go back in here and look around for a little bit. I should just stay here for a little bit and get some solar, though. Uh, yeah, you know what? Nah, yeah, I'm going to stop here. So I can always probably camp right here. I'm going to stop here and get some solar for a little bit and then walk out into the woods. All right, 250 guys. My food bag. Go to the max. I'm having a, of course, I didn't just have a soup. I'm having a mushroom risotto. Heating up some water right now. About two cups. So I'm going to have a, maybe a hot chocolate, I think, after this. Maybe a coffee. A hot chocolate probably. Hot chocolate and dinner. This thing was $16, but it's a lot. It's, uh, it's like it's almost 1,800 calories in that bag. So that's like two days of food if you had to. You know what I mean? Uh, beautiful little spot. I may end up just camping right here, but it's a little muddy there, so I don't know. Plus, I'd like to be a little more private. A little more protection from the wind. So I might, I may, but it's still early. I got a couple hours to kill here. All right, 436, guys. Got my phone up to about 85%. Uh, it would have went quicker, but I'm listening to a book as it's charging. So that definitely eats into the solar. I could have probably stayed here for another hour, maybe a little less, but darkness comes a little quicker up here in these mountains. And uh, I think daylight savings is actually getting close. So it's getting darker earlier. So I'm going to head back here. Um, I did a little reconnaissance back here earlier. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I came back here earlier just looking around and uh, came up with a couple little spots up here I'm going to look at, a little closer at right now. These beaver are putting in some serious work. Looks like there's a couple lodges. So there's more than uh, one little family of beavers here. I passed one tree. I couldn't believe how big it was. I thought maybe someone cut down with an axe. It was massive. Biggest tree I've ever seen a beaver take down. You know, usually it's like these, a little bigger, you know, all... This one was massive. Um, I think I'm going to go right here. It's a little damp, but everything's kind of chewed up. I'm guessing it's from the beaver when they knock the logs down. The logs are tearing up the soil when they're chopping at it and pulling them. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, November 7th, my eight-month mark out here. And it's 7.30, and uh, look at this, all this ice. Um, my tent has been covered with it. It's been raining on me ice since about 10 o'clock last night when I noticed it. So... Obviously, this is not a great spot. <laughs> Ice came down and laid down early. I mean, no snow or nothing. Just a lot of 
my tent's just frozen. Um, so I gotta, I'm gonna slowly get ready now, hit the road, then uh, hope for sun, and then, you know, do the same thing I did yesterday. But let me start getting ready. I'm cold right now. All right, still before eight o'clock, guys. I'm just taking my time looking at all the free frozen sections. I know there's trash there that just came out of my uh, shoe this morning. That's my late night snacks that I'm eating. I'm really uh, starting to think that uh, bears are probably hibernated by now. It's getting cold at night. I mean, it went down to the teens last night, but then again, the day's getting warm, so I don't know. If they have a food source, and I'm going off only what I know, East Coast bear, but these are black bears out here too. They just happen to be brown color, so... My information might be a little skewed, but like they'll stay out later in Pennsylvania, even in the cold, if there's a dedicated food source. So you might get a bear that won't hibernate at all, or like a soft hibernation, we'll call it. It's not like he's uh, plugging up his backside and uh, going to sleep for the full three, four months or whatever. It's like a soft hibernation. Like he'll go to bed for a couple of days and come back out and check this food source. So it's, it can't, bears can be weird. It's not like everyone thinks we'll go, ooh. Oops, no, let's go uh, bury ourselves in a cave or something or, you know, under a pile of leaves or blah, blah, whatever. So, but I'm starting to think bears are less and less. And I haven't seen one knock on wood, just tracks. But the tracks have been fresh, I saw. That was, what, a week ago? Anyway, just dealing with everything froze down here. So as I'm taking the, this off, you know, it's raining on me. So my sleeping bag got extra wet. That's like stuck to the tent. Then we'll come off. I don't want to touch it. Not too bad, just... Yeah, whatever. I don't feel like dealing with it this morning. So I'm going to pack everything up loosely. And then the parking lot looks like we might even have some sun in the parking lot. Still packing up. Just keep my hands warm. Um, usually I start out with just these on, which are falling apart. Literally nothing, just minor protectant. My hands are like burning halfway through. So I kept the big ones on today. Very uncomfortable and uh, not uncomfortable at uh, uh I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Uh, I'm clumsy with them. But uh, my fans, fans feel much better. On a second note, man, I miss my old tent. I mean, let's just, I got one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece. Four pieces, I got to touch and maneuver. They're all wet. Where my other tent, I just had one right into the thing. Um, I had a couple stakes. So I maybe can say two. It's my hiking pole I already used, the same thing. It's already soaking. It's already froze from last night, just like my hiking pole will be froze. So I'm just missing my other tent right now. And it's simplicity. Simplicity? Simplicity. Yeah, yeah something like that. English. Um, just, ah, oh, look at this. Like, this right here weighs more than my whole, my, this fly weighs more than my tent did. And I got all this, it's wet. It's just, ah, uh, you know, don't worry. It has an advantage, like last night. Uh, even though my head was touching and my feet were touching, I wasn't jammed up in them like I was in my other tent. It's plenty of pros and cons, but this is a con. And uh, it makes me definitely think when I get to the Appalachian Trail. I'm, I, Appalachian Trail, I might go to a tarp and bivy. But I kind of, I really like having the privacy, the tent, the protection, you know, the so-called protection. So I, I think I'm just going to go back to the, my other tent that I used to have, which would be perfect for the Appalachian Trail. Here's another little thing that you really don't think about, but it, 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 it raises issues. Um... I usually like smart water bottles, but then if you guys notice, I switched to them uh, body armor bottles because they're, they're shorter and a little thicker. They're way more durable. Anyway, they didn't have neither of them, so I had to get these life water bottles, which I don't like because it has a smaller mouth opening than the body armor one, so it freezes quicker. And I had to shake this for about 20 minutes this morning to break up all the ice. Plus, these are not nearly as strong. Like, when I press down on these in my pack, when, I'm, when it's stuck a little, I'm trying to jam it in, the top will actually collapse down on itself and push in. So I'm not a big fan of these bottles. I should have just kept the body armor bottles, but I try to replace my bottles every month. Not every time I stop at a gas station, but every month just for hy you know, hygiene reasons, hygienic reasons. Uh, I do hit them probably once a week. I'll take hand sanitizer, wipe the mouth off and everything. So I try to keep them as clean as possible. But I'm a filthy mess out here hiking. And I'm not like a crazy... Uh, environmentalist or anything but i mean i don't want to be wasting plastic bottles just to waste plastic bottles you know what i mean so i try to keep them for a whole month i should have kept them more but they do get beat up and they will get compromised eventually so that's why i replaced them anyway uh, i'm just babbling i really can't wait to go back to uh nail jeans i love nail jeans man i just i when i do the appalachian try i don't care what the look is and oh, 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 you're costing yourself a pound 
I just like now jeans, especially here in the winter time now. They're more sturdy. You know, this freezes and unthaws a couple times. I got to worry about it breaking. The now jean, I have no worries. Plus, it's got the wider mouth. It's going to take longer to freeze. In theory, I think, right? If something's wider, it would freeze slower than a, a narrower one. At least in my head. Plus, I can get a stick in better, break it up. All kinds of advantages for now jean, especially in the winter for me. I could heat water and lay with it, which I would never do that. I'm too lazy, but it could. And I'm talking too much as usual, for especially when I haven't leaving camp yet. Feels like it's going to be a good day, though, that sun. A nice day, temperature-wise. All right, guys, 8.30. Um, looks like the parking lot's got some sun, and it should be frozen dry, so I just can't. I'm amazed by the work these beavers put in. I didn't know, so when they chopped down one of these huge ones, right, I think there's one coming up. Then they piece it off, like, in the middle, and they chunk it up. I just thought they uh, took the limbs and stuff. But they're actually chunking it up just like I would process firewood. So they cut it down and they buck it. It's crazy. They section it. They put in some serious work. All right, guys, nine o'clock. Just still sitting here. I'm probably going to be here till about 10 when I get some solar. Um, I just got a message on my, I had it programmed on my phone. Today's daylight savings. Now, I don't know if that means last night was daylight savings and it's really eight o'clock right now. I don't know. My phone and my wa uh, watch both say 9 o'clock. I, I guess my phone would do it on its own, but it doesn't have service. So I don't know if that's tonight at like uh, 2 or 3 in the morning or if it happened last night at 2 or 3 in the morning. I'm not sure. I think, I think it's tonight, but it doesn't really matter. Time really doesn't matter out here. All right. Well, I don't have much energy today, so... I'm thinking maybe I need some water or just caffeine. So I went, a, what I did was I went across the road instead of getting into the pile up right there. And then a stream starts on the other side of the road. I'm sure that stream is some of this going underneath in a pipe somehow or just naturally going through. But uh, the other side's a small running creek. So I got some water there. I don't know if you can tell, but it's not the clearest. It's a little tinted. Um, so I didn't fill each bottle up about three quarters of the way up. And then I made this strong. I made my drop strong, so in theory, I'm thinking that if it's got a process through the ground, it's, you know, it's filtering out more of the, uh, the beaver fever, the beaver crap, so I'm going to give it a shot. I just got to get, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel like I have any energy today. I already ate something. I put 230 calories in me, so that's not the food, so I just, maybe I need something to drink. I don't know, but, uh, We'll see. I'm going to uh, put my drops in it now and then I uh, do a caffeine mix with the uh, honey stinger. What's it? Uh, honey stinger rapid hydration mix and it's mango melon. It's got 50 grams of caffeine. I'm putting two of them in. So, we'll see. Cross my fingers. All right, guys. Um, my phone's up to 100. I'm going to plug my power bank in, maybe get a half hour or so out of it. It's like 940 right now. Um, I was just getting ready to drink this water and a nice hiker pulled up in a van. He's like, dude, I seen you yesterday. I saw the hyperlight. And I'm like, God, it's got to be a through hiker. And then he ran to me again. We started talking, uh, blah, 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 blah. And he ended up offering me some water. He had a gallon jug. So I filled up uh, just one bottle. I don't want to be greedy. But he's like, yeah, beaver water is a last resort. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I doubled up on my doses. So I dumped one out. I'm going to taste the other one here in a couple minutes. But so I'm good on water right now. I'm going to pound this down and get some, get hydrated with some caffeine and if uh, you drink like an electrolyte or a caffeine mixed drink in the morning or whenever you drink it, um, I definitely recommend trying these uh, mango melon honey stingers rapid hydration mix. They are delicious. And each one has 15, uh, 50 grams of caffeine. So it's supposed to be one in 16 ounces of water. So I put two in for my liter. So I'm getting 100 grams of caffeine, electrolytes, you know, sugar, all that nonsense. And it's delicious. So, all right, guys, about time I start. <laughs> Um, 11 o'clock, just leaving the area. My pack feels so good. I only got about a liter of water on me, maybe even a little less than a liter, but, uh, so my pack feels good, but I'm going to have to stop and get water ASAP. Although I believe today should be a majority of down or at least level it down. Um, I don't think I'm hitting elevation for a couple days, but that's just me looking at a squiggly line on a map, so I really don't know. It's a beautiful day out. Um, I took a, ch a chance when I was back there at the uh, drying my gear out and getting some solar. It was so nice and warm in the sun that uh, I 
took some baby wipes, cleaned up my face, my ears, my neck, my hands, my arms, you know. Just did like a outer upper body wash. Um, I put on some more body glide. Uh, I'm, it's just about gone. I may be able to get a couple more, uh, maybe another good uh, application. On. I, of course, I put on like spackle too, which is probably isn't needed, but um, I usually get the big one. And I go through a big one in a, in a month of hiking. So this little one I got well, well over a month ago, but I'm, I haven't been putting on the miles, so it makes sense. The little one's lasting this long. Look at that. Wow. Just absolutely incredible. I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. 3.05 miles in. Just had some energy chews and some uh, sour sprees. Feeling good out here. Just every time I see it, I can't say it enough how incredible it is out here. And I cannot wait to come back and hike this state. That's definitely on the top of my list. Come back and do the Colorado Trail. Or maybe the Continental Divide Trail. I don't know. But I definitely want to spend some more time in Colorado. Just, jeez. I know that zoom in sucks. I definitely made a good decision to uh, camp where I camped at yesterday, even though it was a little short on the mileage, because I'm just now getting into some areas where I could actually camp at. So, Alright guys, it's 12.30, I'm uh, uh, sorry, 4.23 miles in, and I'm at my lowest elevation, I believe, since I, I left Denver, so probably uh, Falcon, Mount Falcon State Park, I think it was. I'm at uh, 8,338 right now. I believe this is my lowest in quite a while. Look at this view. Big rock. All right, thought about taking a break, but I'm gonna keep going. Uh, since I don't have water, my pack's not nearly as heavy. 4.44 miles in, 444. All right, guys, I'm at 5.24 miles in. Just dropped my pack for a little break. Man, it's just incredible out here. Just that five, ten minute break, though, I let my shoulders relax. Oh, there's some water down there. And definitely need to find water here pretty soon. All right, guys, it's at 1.40 in the afternoon. I'm at seven miles in. I'm still doing pretty good. I've had one break. Um, but I need water. I'm starting to get a headache now. I got less than a half a liter left. So I drank one liter this morning, pretty much all of it before we left. And then I had just like maybe three quarters of a liter. So I drank and I barely drank anything during the seven miles. And the terrain is completely changing as you can see. There hasn't been any water sources. Just that uh, like beaver pond that I saw a couple miles back. That was down in there. I could have walked too, but I might have should have now. Nah, nowhere. Whew. Absolutely beautiful, though. I was hoping there's somebody in that truck where there's water somewhere over there, so I broke off. Like nothing. At least I see some houses down there. All right, guys. I'm uh, 8.17 miles in. I'm at 76.05 elevation, and it's 2 o'clock. Looking at my map, um, got another three miles, three and a half miles, we'll call it. I'm coming up on Erickson Springs Campground. 
and it's supposed to be in Erickson Springs there, so hopefully that's water. Uh, that's on my stream a little. I just took that little branch off up there because there was a truck there, but nobody's in the truck. Uh, it's probably out uh, riding ATVs, got a trailer on it. Hey girls, uh, do you guys know where I can get something to drink at? No? Okay. I need to get hostile. Carry on. Well, here's a little, uh, no, I thought it was a little running creek. Nope, not gonna work. There's something down there, but that's over the barbed wire, and that's all the runoff from, uh, the cattle and everything. There's a pond down there, like, where they drink out of, but I got across this barbed wire. I was thinking about stopping at that house that I'm assuming this is our cattle, but they had it all fenced off and, and the gate closed and everything, no trespassing signs everywhere. So I just keep plugging away. Well, I don't know how well you can see that road over there. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna be going up that. I just hope that I go up that tomorrow after I have some water. <laughs> There's supposed to be a creek coming up here and it would make sense to be down right along there like where them evergreens are at. I haven't seen it yet. It looks like I'm getting ready to get into some elevation very soon. And I do not, I am not built for that right now with no water. I'm not built for it right now being uh, almost 10 miles in at the end of my day. So water is becoming a pressing, a pressing issue. There's my creek down there. I know, I, could, I thought I could hear it, but I wasn't sure if it was that or the wind. Now the only problem is, am I gonna intersect it at somewhere much lower than this? So, I don't know. I got about another mile to go until I get to this Erickson Springs picnic area and then the campground's a couple miles off that, so I'm just looking to camp somewhere around there. But I'm gonna pass that. It looks like my uh, path intersects with um, that creek. I just hope it intersects. And that road is definitely something I'm going up tomorrow <laughs> that I showed you. Oh, I hear something running right here. Oh, I can probably get down there and get water right now. That could be a little sketchy though, but I'm probably gonna go for it. Look at that. I know it doesn't look that bad here, but it's definitely sketchy. I'm gonna have to uh, figure this out right here, but I'm pretty sure I'm going for it instead of risking it. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna cross that. It's coming out right there. It's just a little steep right here. Man, is there anything on this side? Hey, use your brain, Chris. Yep, right there, I think. Nope, it's frozen. Uh, I'm gonna drop my pack though and climb down there. We found it on this side, right there. This will work perfectly. All right, so now I just gotta get some water and then uh, get my ass to the Erickson campsite. It's getting late, it's, uh, I'm 10.50 miles in. I'm at 69, 68 elevation and it's three o'clock, 2.51. All right, guys, let me get this water. All right, three o'clock. My hands are for reason right now, but much safer than going down there, even though it was only a trickle. Got all three bottles filled up. Got the Aquamere in them. So in 15 minutes, I can start drinking. Oh, yay. I just had to do that just in case coming up. There's an issue, so I couldn't pass it up. Um, on a side note that's important is I'm almost out of Aquamere. <laughs> um, I got this when I was in Leadville. So, man, it's only been, what, two weeks, but when I, was, when I, was, I used to just use Aquamere as a backup, and it would last, every, like, two months, but it's, uh, plus I double it up a lot, and blah, blah, blah. I'm almost out. I probably have, I don't even know, a day or two, maybe, maybe two. So I'm going to have to revert back to my filter, which I have no clue if it's still good or not, because... I've been letting it freeze and unfreeze, but I'm, I don't know if I ever used it before. It was brand new. I know when I got it, I never felt, I don't think I filtered water one time in Iowa. And if I did, it was maybe once or twice, or maybe I tested it out when I got it, went there before I hiked to Iowa, but maybe it was dried out by then. Anyway, I'm not gonna have a choice coming up here. I'm gonna have to, once I run out of Aquamira, 
before I get to Grand Junction, I'm going to have to use the filter. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And I'll find out if it's broke or not, when I get sick or not. It's looking like I'm going to come down close to that uh, creek tomorrow. I'm assuming now I'm going to be on that road and I'm going to loop around and go back up. Left or right, I don't know yet, but... Uh, it's looking like I should be good for getting more water because I was just breaking it down. I woke up this morning with like maybe between everything a half, half a liter. I drank that and I got a refill. I drank a whole nother bottle. I got off that guy. So that's a liter and a half. I may have, even though I think it's under, I may have had two and a half liters of water today all day since I woke up and I'm uh, almost, I'm 11 miles in. 10.82 so what I'm saying is that's not enough water I'm going to be dehydrated probably going to be cramping up tonight so I'm just talking about this because I'm going to have to definitely drink at least one liter tonight before I go to bed and then I'll cook with a little and then probably drink one in the morning. So tomorrow I'm already starting off with probably half a liter at max. But got to take it as it comes. Well, when I first looked at my map, it looks like the picking area should be like right here. But it's actually, I got to go all the way down and around, link up with a road and then go back up. Uh, it doesn't want to end. So I'm looking for a place to camp already, but there, I'm getting into some houses and private property. So I'm going to have to loop all the way around oh well all right well i guess i didn't have to stop there and get that uh water because i'm literally right on level with it but i couldn't take that chance uh, still beating myself up over running out of aquamira i've never had that happen but then again like i said i've never used it as a primary All right, so toilet building, half mile, trailhead, campground. Yeah, so I got, a, I got a little way to go up here. Hopefully there's nobody here, even though I see a car right there. Just want to set up camp, stuff my face, get some sleep while I drink a lot of fluids. Now I know I can drink all three and then re-get it right here. Got a couple people here. walking a dog all right supposed to be a campground up in here we shall see there's a lot more people than I thought here I had a couple people walking down the road up there doesn't matter I'm camping somewhere here I'll tell you that much no services pack it in pack it out yep 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 All right, looks like there's a spot right there. I don't know how many uh, camp spots there are back here, but looks like one here. Two, there's no reason for me to go all the way back. Let's go up and look at, is that a trash can? I don't want to sit next to it. That can't be good. No, it's a, All right, no need for me to go all the way back. This will work, I think. I can put my tent right here. Lovely trash left in there. Here goes the area my tent's supposed to go, and this will work just fine. All right, I'm going to come down to this campsite, which is uh, number four. It's got a flatter um, tent area. So I just had to get my pack off. Throw uh, some kiwi strawberry propel in here. I'm going to suck this down. Move my stuff over here. Uh, put on some wool warming layers. And uh, just cook some dinner. All right, I only did 11.78. So by the time I get over there, we'll call it 11.80. <laughs> I already turned my watch off. So it was a good day either way. Because I did, what, eight miles the first day and I think seven the second day or somewhere, give or take, in there mix. So it was a good day. Tomorrow looks like I'll be going up some or a lot. We'll see. 
I'm not sure quite what road that I'm taking yet out of here. I gotta look at my map, but bathroom's down there, but it's closed, obviously. Got a nice tent platform. That's the word I was looking for, platform. No need to walk back any further. This is just fine. Perfect. I mean, that's perfect. You can't ask for much more than that. All right, time for some dinner, guys. And some more fluid. All right, 4 o'clock, guys. I'm all set up. I'm eating a little... Uh, what am I eating here? Pad thai. Good. Got a little bit of spice. Nothing for me to put my last hot uh, hot sauce pouch in it. I'm going to uh, walk around the campground and eat it. I don't know. A little extra insurance maybe for bears. You know, I cooked it and back everything, whatever, back there, but blah, 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 blah. Ah, good day. My heel definitely feels it right now. I'm limping around. But uh, it was a good day. I'll put some Tiger Bomb on it. After I get done eating and then uh, hop in the rack on my tent and uh, see what tomorrow brings. But a good day. Um, really good day. I feel good about it. First time I felt good after a hike in a while. Beautiful back here. Nice campground. What's there? Seven, eight. Eight. I see maybe one more down there. Nine. Good amount of campgrounds. Bathroom facilities, a trail, everything. Five o'clock, guys. What well, I think is five o'clock. I think the clocks go back tonight. Um, it could be six o'clock, though. No, no, because that would only make it four o'clock, right? Yeah, so it's definitely five o'clock now. We're getting ready to get dark, so... That would make sense now. Clocks go back tonight. Anyway, I'm all set up. She's actually nice and tight tonight. Looking good. Good and sexy. Oh, man. I've talked way too much, I think, today and yesterday. I'm looking at my storage. I'm already at half, and I started at like 35, and I'm only three days in. I've used entirely too much. I wish I could go in and edit my clips now, because sometimes I just talk for like six minutes when I'm walking down the road, and I always cut that down to like a minute, you know, whatever. I wish I could do that now and just save that clip. But I would have to go in the Kind Master. I guess I could cut it. No, because once I delete it on my phone, then I lose it in Kind Master, so I'd have to add to it. It's not going to happen. So I'm talking too much like right now, but... Beautiful out here, as Colorado always is. Uh, you guys know the deal. Unless I uh, get into some altercation tonight, I'll see you at one in the morning.